What's good? It's your boy, Jamie Jordan. Um, behind the edit, this is my Finding Fugami intro. mix of practical effects and edited effects uh, but let's just get right into it so if i show you frame by frame a lot of this was done in photoshop actually so if you see these are just individual layers and okay, let me open up the uh the little photoshop um i actually had to split it into two photoshop files here because it got too big to save so the first thing i did i took this photo i used the pen tool and traced it around my body and then i converted it to a smart object added a drop shadow converted it to a smart object again so now i have this outline of just me then what i did was created a, another mask around the one i just made and used this paper torn paper brushes i'll leave a link in the description to download these so i used this brush and created a mask and then you know erased around it so then it has this torn paper look here see that little torn paper look then what i did took this lined paper this this line paper put it below and basically did the same thing but just a little bit bigger so then I had this extra room so you can see the the line paper so then you're left with this right and then the last thing I did was search up paper texture on Google so the paper texture looks something like this I'll show it on screen I grouped the lined paper and myself I made that a group and I put the paper texture held alt and pressed right below it and that does this so then basically it only shows up where there's there's pixels in this group. And then I changed the blend mode to multiply. So that's normal, multiply. Gives it this little texture here. So without it, it looks like that. It just adds a little bit of a paper texture. Okay, so that's how I did like the the base animation and I did that for it's just slowly moving up each frame and for this newspaper what I did I just googled newspaper headers like newspaper covers I used the same eraser brush the paper brush and made it torn on that on the edges then I have this kind of nice collage in the background and so if you see see as it's animating up essentially all i did was pull it up but yeah basically used this rough and edges pulled the newspaper all the way down to the bottom and the next frame just pulled it a bit higher hopefully that makes sense yeah so then i'm here and then all i just did was kept pulling it up so then there was a bit of movement in the background because i didn't want each frame to, to, to be the same in the background just because i'm i don't know i think it looks better to have the those extra details and here for example you can see that i run out of space ran out of space so i just took this duplicated the layer brought it down and then started the thing over again same thing over here and then what i did so as this is happening here you can see the my brain starts animating out and so what i did here i used play-doh i went to cvs i bought play-doh <laughs> i like looked up a youtube tutorial there's like little kitty tutorials on how to make different stuff with play-doh i made a brain so I did that, I recorded a different time lapses of me making this brain and I like just flattened it, like I punched it down, flattened it. So then what I did was in reverse, the brain is about this flat here, I, but I put it around where my head was and then I created a layer mask, so here, here it is without. What I ended up doing, I put it on like that opacity, then I used the pen tool and traced around my hat. If you see here, I have a hat on. I traced around my hat, enable layer mask, so then it, it lines up here, like with my hoodie. So originally it was like here, right? That's about what the mask was. And then I went to white. Oh, and basically brought back some of this. Obviously more clean. I went around the edges like that. But on the left side, I allowed it to, you know, be a little bit crazy. And then I, you know, went in reverse of that time lapse I just showed you. So now it's animating out a little bit. You see, I still have a bit of a mask here, but mostly just lining up with the hoodie. So it's kind of taking over my head slowly. And then eventually it kind of just jumps to the well-made brain. And then this brain, I then animate into Finding Fugami. But first, you see this background, see these magazines start to come in. What I did, again, this I ended up rasterizing to save space. But what I did, I took a ton of magazines. I just Googled magazine covers. I took all of these cool covers. Basically what I did was on the one side, lined up half of them. So I lined 
line them up, made sure they were the same width, line them up like that, and then group them. So then when I move the group, they all move. Oh, and then one last thing with the group, I added a color overlay of black and just brought it down a little bit like like there just so it's a little bit darker because this would have been super distracting in the background but see how they're a little bit dark here that's from the black overlay but yeah so i have these magazines that come up on the sides like this and they kind of just filter up so this left side on the left side the magazines are going up you can see and then on the right side these magazines are going down right so that's the magazine but you see in the middle, you have these brains animating out. So this was just stop motion. Again, here, just masked out the desk. So it's just the, and I would line them up and began unraveling them with a time lapse until, funny, you know, it starts unraveling. Oh, this is interesting. So, so you can see at the end, it says finding Fugami. Originally, I only, did stop motion for the Fugami. The finding part, so this layer, I selected the G, copied and pasted it. Pretend this still has its mask and then I put it here. And I did the same with the I. The N is just this. It's just the M with this part cut off. And then the D, I just took the U, turned it sideways, stretched it out a bit and took the I and put it here. So that's how I got the finding. But this is just stop motion of it animating out. Finding, I just did one letter per frame, animates out with the rest, with the Fugami. And then each frame, I just adjusted the position a little bit, like just like that, of each of these letters. Uh, just, just so that there's a bit of movement, like here. See how there's just that little bit of like extra jiggle, feel me? And so I have this Fugami layer in here. I'll show you in a second why this is relevant, but as I was moving these layers slightly, I was trying to get them to line up with this F, like with this word, the Fugami part. So as you see, they're slowly moving up frame by frame. So then by the end, by the last layer, the Fugami is basically overlaid exactly with this tab, right? This is the last frame of the stop motion. And then it cuts to this after effect, where it says finding Fugami in pink text which exactly lines up with this. And here I made an individual layer of every letter. So the finding part, I animated the opacity so that it goes left to right. So this first F starts its animation on the first frame, the I starts the second frame, N starts the third, D, so on and so forth. So it has this cool like fading from side to side look. And the Fugami, I animated the position. Again, it goes from left to right, but it starts up with this big thing and then it goes small to here in the search engine, in the Google search engine. And I also animated color. I added a fill at the start, it's pink. You can just keyframe color. And then at the end of the animation, it's keyframe to black. Then I go here to the Google search bar. This is just a rectangle with rounded edges. I added a trim path by pressing here, trim path, and animated the start and start keyframes. So it kind of, you know, loops around like that. Here I animated a little mouse that goes from the top down. And then when it hovers over the Google search bar, I have this cursor and this I pick whipped to here so it follows the pointer's position, the mouse. And here where it hovers over the Google search, I keyframed opacity for both of these layers. Because it's just one frame, it's an instant switch. It's not a gradual keyframe, which is what I wanted. And so the cursor I animated from 100 to zero and then the pointer I animated from zero to 100. Here I think I added a click sound effect and just cut to Google. This I screen recorded. And here at this Google you see this, it's like Fugami, love and perfect balance. It's like, you know, this. I just go in, my mouse tracks these different things, highlights that and then it clicks on the on the photo. So this frame, what I did was went to tracker, stabilize motion. So that gives you this. And I tracked the mouse. So I put it into the middle of the mouse and then pressed here, frame by frame, just tracked it. I have a tutorial on how to use this effect that I'll link. But yeah, I did track motion on this effect, which is why the camera looks all cool, like following that. And then I added this motion blur effect to make the motion look all cool. So that's what that is. Oh, and also real quick for this, how I got this custom Google page, Fugami is not a real thing, but if you go to Chrome, Say so I, I ended up doing Pluto. If you go to Chrome, right click, inspect, then you can just edit the source code. So here it says Pluto TV. Make it say Jordan Mitchell, press enter, and it puts here. So I just went in, added custom text for all of these little bits, like Fugami planet. Fugami is a planet in perfect balance, blah, blah, blah. So I went in, manually edited all this shit. So that's how I got that. For the 
planet. This is my Fugami logo. This is just the invert. All I did was at the end, let's say I wanted to add this. What I would do is go ahead and pick whip it to this. I think that's the layer. So now it follows and I would add a motion blur. Now it follows the rest of it. So that's how I added these logos and I added this. This is, I have this video of it zooming in, which I'll explain in a second. But I took the first frame and I said add frame hold, which is basically adding a screenshot. So now that's what this layer is. So you do that by right clicking, time, freeze frame. And then I added it. And then what I did was put a position and scale keyframe and then went forward a couple frames to here, which is where the video starts. And then it just, you know, does that. Isn't that clean, but you know, it goes fast, so. This is actually an old effect that I did in the summer. And so to be honest, I kind of forgot how to do it. I'll leave a tutorial link down below that kind of explains how I did this. And then I just added a hue effect to it to change it from blue to red. Boom. And then here, right when the clouds kind of come in, I fade this out and I have a white layer. I have a white solid below. It just fades to white which is where I'll put the episode name. That was behind the edit, the Finding Fugami intro. It was a pretty complicated edit, relatively. So I tried my best to explain it in a way that might help other editors get inspiration or know some of the strategy behind the animation. The final product I'm pretty proud of, but all the individual pieces, there's not really any complicated effects that I did. It was just taking really basic things and putting it together in the right way. Somewhere there's a playlist with other behind the edit breakdown videos where I go through similar projects and talk about how I did them. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything you need help with in video editing or life. I'd love to help. Peace.